the U.S. Department of Homeland Security has just announced a new AI initiative. Welcome back to the AI Breakdown Brief, all the AI headline news you need in around five minutes. One of the things that I've often noted on this show is the sort of disparity between, on the one hand, the talky side of Washington, D.C., the politicians, Congress, the Senate, etc., running a seemingly never-ending set of meetings and discussions and hearings on AI legislation without ever really doing anything about it, as compared to the U.S. military establishment, as well as private agencies, who are just moving ahead full steam. For example, we talked about how the State Department is hosting a military conference on AI this week, and yesterday the Department of Homeland Security also announced three pilot programs around generative AI. So what are those three efforts? The first is basically to use AI to better extract information from the huge volume of investigative reports and other materials that the department creates. As Axios sums up, investigators will be able to use LLMs to more quickly summarize investigative reports and to improve the process of searching through reports. The agency hopes the pilot program will improve detection of fentanyl-related networks and help identify perpetrators and victims of child exploitation. The second initiative is a training-focused initiative that is going to attempt to use generative AI to personalize materials to help train immigration officers more effectively and in a way that is more up-to-date with changing legal issues and policies. Finally, they are trying to simplify and reduce the time cost around resilience and disaster planning with FEMA, making it easier, for example, for communities to submit grants and gain funding in these areas. The New York Times characterized Homeland Security as embracing AI and says the agency will be the first in the federal government to roll out a comprehensive plan to integrate the technology into a variety of uses. Said Alejandro Mayorkas, the secretary of DHS, one cannot ignore it. And if one isn't forward-leaning and recognizing and being prepared to address its potential for good and its potential for harm, it will be too late. And that's why we're moving quickly. So how big is the scope of these initiatives? Well, for some reference point, DHS employs 260,000 people. For these new AI pilots, they're planning to hire 50 AI experts and spend $5 million overall. Meaning, in other words, that these are relatively small efforts. However, I think the fact that they are doing a full court press strategy around this indicates where it sits in terms of a priority. As part of the initiative, they'll be working with OpenAI, Anthropic, and Meta, and will also use Microsoft, Google, and Amazon Cloud in these pilots. Basically, it sounds to me like they're testing everyone credible to see whose tools are the most helpful. Importantly, this is not something that's meant to be drawn out. The agency has to report on the results of the pilot programs by the end of this calendar year. I think it will probably not surprise you that my very strong assumption is that we're going to see a lot more efforts like this coming from basically every area of government. One additional area of overlap between the AI industry and the U.S. government may be in combating spying and cybersecurity issues. Another piece from Axios today is called Insider Threats Are AI Developers' Next Hurdle. They write... AI developers hiring quickly to keep pace with market demand are struggling with a new threat, spies and employees looking to steal company secrets. U.S. AI companies are likely already prime targets for nation-state adversaries' espionage campaigns. Experts predict that AI developers could become even bigger threats than chip manufacturers and biotechnology companies. Of course, we recently covered the Justice Department's indictment of a former Google software engineer for stealing AI secrets and sharing them with two Chinese companies. It seems to me like as the U.S. government gets more interested in this area, this could be a point of overlap for these companies. One more vaguely U.S. government-related story. The United States Securities and Exchange Commission has recently at least partially moved on from its incredulity around the cryptocurrency industry to focus on warning of AI-related scams. Reuters reports that the SEC has now fined two investment advisors over their AI claims. The SEC said that Toronto-based Delphia Inc. and San Francisco-based Global Predictions Inc. agreed to pay a combined $400,000 in fines to settle civil charges related to AI washing. Writes Reuters, The SEC found that from 2019 to 2023, Delphia made false and misleading statements in SEC filings, a press release, and on its website over its purported use of AI and machine learning. Global Predictions did the same in 2023 on its website and in social media. As part of the settlement, neither company was forced to admit or deny the SEC's charges. Given the small amount of the fines and the nature of the settlement, to me it just looks like a ratcheting up of the warning shots from the SEC around other investment advisors throwing around AI language too loosely. Over in big tech land, YouTube has announced a new tool that will allow creators to self-label when their videos contain AI-generated material. Basically, this is a new optional checkbox that comes up as creators are uploading and posting their content, which asks them to disclose whether there is altered or synthetic content that seems realistic. Examples given include making a real person say or do something they didn't, altering footage of real events and places, or showing a, quote, realistic-looking scene that didn't actually happen. The flip side is that they are distinguishing for things like beauty filters, special effects, and clearly unrealistic content like animation. Right now, these disclosures are voluntary. Finally today, an interesting chart on which jobs are most likely to be impacted by AI, with the source being a World Economic Forum report called Jobs of Tomorrow. 
At the top of the heap, that report found that 73% of IT tasks could be automated or significantly altered, 70% of finance tasks, 67% of customer sales, 65% of operations, 57% of HR, 56% of marketing, 46% of legal, and 43% of supply chain. Of course, one of the big questions when it comes to how AI does ultimately impact jobs is whether the disruption will be on the task level or on the actual job level. In other words, will this change what people do, or will it straight up replace people? or some combination thereof. This will obviously continue to be one of the most important questions in terms of society's relationship with AI, but for now, that is going to do it for the AI Breakdown Brief. Up next, the main AI Breakdown.